we we will ahead. start our hymns. <laughs> the first hymn is in three, two, four. In the cross of Christ I glory. We will sing all four verses. Jesus, keep me near the cross. We will sing all four verses again. And this is 335. <clears throat> Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fire. Six, one. 
one eight. Guide me ever, great redeemer. And again, we'll sing all verses one, two, and three. <clears throat>
feet. Lord Jesus, joy of loving hearts. Next hymn is 614. I think? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and there is a bomb in Gilead.
do one more six four one <clears throat> all on welcome <clears throat> Welcomes you welcomes me, says Jesus, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. My dear brothers and sisters, good morning, and I welcome you in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who came, that we may have life and have life more abundantly. A few announcements this morning. Please continue to pray for all those who are in need of healing. If you and your family member is hospitalized or in need of a pastoral care, please contact me at 267-391-8514. Also, this time I know we are in the green phase in Bucks County, but we still do have our restrictions. So I kindly ask that you follow those restrictions and guidelines of mask, wearing your mask, washing your hands and your gloves and keep social distancing. If you do need to reach out to someone, perhaps a phone call or a text message, email, those still work. So please be cautious and careful even in this green phase that we are in right now. Thank you also for your continuous generosity through your financial giving. We much appreciate that. We ask that you will continue your support. There are opportunities to drop it off uh, during the week from 12 to 1, church office, or you can mail it to the church address. Thank you again. We also ask that when you join us on Facebook Live, that you will please comment in your attendance and how many people are with you. We are trying to keep track of the attendance 
So your help is much, much appreciated. Also, if you know of anyone who is unable to participate in the virtual worship service that we are live streaming, please let us know so that we can make uh, other arrangements to help them to participate in that. Also, we ask that you send ad any additional hymns you may like uh, to have during our virtual hymn singing uh, to the church office at Redeemer Lutheran Church Pendel at Verizon.net, and we will see that it is in the list of hymns that be sung in our hymn sing. The church's office is not open, as you know. Please don't leave any messages on the answering machine, as no one is in the office to receive those. You can always reach me at my cell again, 267-391-8514, or send an email to the church office at Redeemer Lutheran Church Pendel at Verizon.net. Our secretary, Holly, is working from our home, so she will be able to receive those emails. Small Amazon continues to provide these opportunities to make donation to Redeemer Lutheran Church every time you make a purchase on Amazon. The only requirement is that you sign in smileamazon.com and register to have Redeemer Lutheran Church receive your donation. Every time you go, you are encouraged to do that and to complete your order. So that's a simple way of you supporting your charitable organization. And at this, in this case, Redeemer Lutheran Church. Uh, but technologies, if you do have any technical, technological problems, you can reach out to our brother, Tom Gallagher, or talk to Jeff Walson, and they will surely help you along the way. Those are the announcements I have this morning. Again, welcome in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, who promised to be with us. Thank you for being here, and I pray that you will indeed feel and witness the presence of the Holy Spirit as we continue to worship and give God thanks and praise for all of the many blessings in our life. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to give thanks to God, we are reminded of our mission statement, which is, as a community of faith, we worship the triune God, we are called to love and serve all God's people and creation through word and deed. Let us continue as we prepare our hearts to worship.
Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters. I encourage you as we turn to God in confession, receiving God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us now confess our sin. We consign in God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. O oh, beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven, so let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you.
to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to our people on earth. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
A reading from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer, present, no longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, 
you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So after worship service one day, the minister was shaking everyone's hand while they were leaving the worship space. And so an elderly man shook his hand and then turned to the pastor and said, Reverend, that was the worst sermon I ever listened to. It was terrible. Well, as the minister stood there dumbfounded, the old man's wife stepped in trying to help. Please, pastor, please don't pay attention to him. He only repeats what he hears others say. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A story is told of two men who were seriously ill, and so there they were in a bed in the hospital room, one of them lying in the bed near the only window in their room. And so every day he was allowed to spend some time sitting up in his bed so that he could help drain the fluid in his lungs. The other man was forced to spend all these days flat on his back. And so they talked a lot about their life, families, jobs, and vacation. And every time the first man was, who was sitting by the window, he described in details all that he saw outside the window. His roommate always looked for these moments when his world was broadened and brightened up by the world outside. Amazing view of a park with beautiful lake could be seen from the window of their room. Children delightfully playing among ducks and swans. Couples walked in arm in arm among colorful flowers. The stunning city skyline could be seen. When the man by the window had been thoroughly describing all that was happening outside the window, his roommate would close his eyes and imagine all the beautiful scenes of life that were told of him. One night, the man whose bed was near the window, well, he died peacefully during his sleep, and that made his roommate very sad. After some time, when the nurse came to visit him, he asked if he could be moved next to the window. 
And so the nurse agreed and kindly made the switch. When the nurse left the room, the man slowly and painfully propped himself up on one elbow and then took the first look at the world outside. Well, he was stunned. He was stunned because the window faced a blank wall. When the nurse came to visit him the next time, he told her about the beautiful things outside the window that his roommate had described to him. And as hearing that, the nurse replied that his roommate was a blind man. She said to him, probably he was just trying to encourage you. It was not too long ago, pastors from the Lower Box Conference was having a discussion with the bishop of our synod, Bishop Patricia Davenport. And in one of our conversations, the bishop said something that got my attention and really stuck with me ever since. This is what she said, and I quote, It is good to correct, but even better to encourage. It is good to correct, but better to encourage. In today's gospel story, we find Jesus talking much about welcoming. And while it seems that at first Jesus is telling us to be nice and to welcome the stranger, if we were to look a little closer to our text, we will find Jesus' words, we are not the ones who are actually welcoming, but the ones being welcomed. We are not the one who is doing the welcoming, but we are the one who is being welcomed. So my dear brothers and sisters, let me ask, is it possible then that Jesus is trying to tell the first disciples and us, giving us some words of encouragement, knowing that it is not easy and it's not going to be easy to carry out his mission? Is it possible that Jesus is encouraging us and the disciples to not give up because not everyone is going to welcome us, but some will. And in the end, there will be a great reward. And it is going to be out of this world and last for eternity. So be of courage, I believe Jesus is saying. Looking at our gospel, which is the concluding part of the missionary discourse in the Gospel of Matthew, we see that after giving various instruction to the disciples for their mission, warning them of the dangers as he's sending them out like sheep among wolves, and that they will face persecution as father will be against children, children against father, mothers against daughter-in-laws, and all those things, they will be facing suffering we can see Jesus here encouraging the disciples with words that they will be rewarded and that they will be compensated in the end. Whoever welcomes you, welcome me, Jesus says. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward and Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Ralph Jacobson Professor of Old Testament and Alvin Rodnesk Chair in Scripture, Theology, and Ministry commented, These words of Jesus are to be heard as words of promise under the broader commandment to follow Jesus out into the world in mission. Now, Jacobson went on to say, Jesus tell his disciples as it were. I am sending you into a dangerous world as part of my mission to love and to save and bless and be reconciling that very world. 
It is dangerous out there, but you will find welcome. And those who welcome and receive you also welcome and receive me, and they will be rewarded. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, anything we do in the name of Christ will be rewarded in the end. We do not be, need to be afraid to do the work of Christ even when it may seem very discouraging at times. In Paul's letter to the Romans, our second reading, Paul reminds us that while sin is an enslaving power which motivates one to live self-serving, disobedient life, having been set free from sin's slavery, we are encouraged, my dear brothers and sisters, to live obediently under God's grace, whose end, Paul says, is a free gift of eternal life. Do not let sin exercise dominion over your mortal bodies to make you obey their passion, he writes. No longer present your members to sin and as instrument of wickedness, but present yourselves to God, who have been brought from death to life, and present your members as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. He went on to say, that is Paul, but now you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God. The advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Earlier this morning, we heard of this wonderful song, There is a Balm in Gilead. To paraphrase these words, it says, Sometimes we may feel discouraged and that our work may be in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives our soul again. If we cannot preach like Peter or if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. Don't ever be discouraged, my dear brothers and sisters, for Jesus is our friend. So today I say to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, God is with us and Christ has promised us a great reward for our faithfulness. So let us continue to support each other in our various ministries. Let us encourage each other in service and welcome all in the name of Christ, as God has welcomed us in Christ himself. Let us pray for each other instead of condemning or criticizing. Remember, it is good to correct, but better to encourage. So I say to you, let us put the best on what we say and what we do encouraging each other in faithful witnessing, for great will be our reward in heaven, says Jesus. Amen.
Now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us turn to God as we confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned especially D. Grover, Christina Jackson, Doris Parfit, Ruth Schwartz, Lois Hirschberger, Winnie Ferguson, Patty Paul, Aaron Winter, Beth Connolly, Linda Bartelson, Lynn Lepo, Lois Gridell, Jean Lippincott, Danny Vile, Marty Danielson, David Erdman, Edith Williams, Elizabeth Rhinus, Linda Winter, Donald Robinson, Chris Ryan, Tim Cousy, Helen and Jim Susco, all frontline and essential workers, Marie Delphin, and all others that we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As our caring initiative continues, today we lift up in prayer, Linda, Miles, and Tyler McCutcheon, Lori, Sam, and Amy Miola. Lord, you know their needs and wants. Help to guide and protect them in every way. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission in the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you all always, and also with you. Lord's peace. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for your continuous generous support through your finances. And I pray that you will be a blessing as God has blessed you. Thank you for your gifts. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. 
just and true are your ways, O ruler of all the nations. Who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing the glory of your name? Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. For you alone are the Holy One, and blessed. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be reminded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. because we won't be together until after the holiday is over. I wanna wish everybody a very happy 4th of July. Um, enjoy these beautiful days. Be sure to wear your sunscreen if you're outside. Remember to practice social distancing, wear your mask, wash your hands, be safe and be smart. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.